Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. Tax security tip. Get an IPPIN to help stop identity thieves. IRS tax tip 2021-116, August 10, 2021. The IRS and its Security Summit partners recently kicked off their annual summer campaign. This year's theme, Boost Security Immunity, Fight Against Identity Theft. There's a link to that here. Urges tax pros to step up their efforts to protect client data. An IPPIN is a valuable tool that can help end this effort, and it is now available to anyone who can verify their identity. So the IPPIN basically came out of a program that used to be used once someone's identity had already been stolen, and then someone filed a tax return fraudulently on that person's behalf, stealing, we would presume, the refund, so that when the client or yourself as the taxpayer, when we then file the tax return, it gets kicked back. The IRS doesn't accept it because they say someone else has already filed with our identity, meaning they must have at least stolen our social security number our, and our name, of course, in order to do so, noting that the fact that we've had our social security number for our entire lives and we had to basically memorize it when we were children, we're probably reciting it to ourselves all the time during that point, and then we gave it to every financial institution we've ever had to do business with, for the last 50 years or something means it's possible, possible, especially with the technology these days, that the social security number could be compromised at some point along the way. And if it were, then someone might be able to file a tax return on your behalf, something which is becoming more and more valuable given the fact that we have these refundable credits these days, which increase the amount of the possible refund that could be there. Therefore, stolen identities are actually becoming you know, more valuable possibly at this point in time. So how do we safeguard then against someone stealing our identity? Well, at least with regards to filing the tax return, we might be able to file then for the IPPIN, which was the safeguard that used to be given after someone had their identity stolen to stop someone from continuing the process, even after you you figured out that someone stole the identity. Now you can do it preemptively. You could basically say, I'm just going to get this new security number, which is kind of like a second social security number, but only for filing the tax return. And it actually makes more sense than a normal social security number these days, because I believe that they're going to update it each year, which makes a lot more sense. It would be a lot more inconvenient for us because I don't, I'm not sure I can remember another number like each year. Some people could, I probably could if I tried, I bet. But in any case, it seems a lot better for security services if we had a changing number that would happen and that's basically what you can do with regards at least to the irs and the filing of the tax return to safeguard against someone filing on your behalf stealing your identity and causing you problems in that way so an identity protection pin is a six digit number eligible taxpayers get to help prevent social security number or individual taxpayer identification number from being used to file fraudulent federal income tax returns this number helps the IRS verify a taxpayer's identity and accept their tax return. The Get an IPPIN tool, there's a link to that here, enables anyone who has an SSN, Social Security Number, or I-10 to get an IPPIN after they verify their identity through a rigorous authorization process. Obviously, the authorization process needs to be somewhat rigorous here given the fact that you're trying to safeguard against someone stealing your identity and you have to prove your identity in order to get the new number that you want so that you can then prove your identity in the future. So you got to make, you know, you have to prove your identity pretty, pretty convincingly there. So that's going to be one of the hurdles to get in this process on the go, on the roll. So taxpayers should review the security access requirements. There's a link to that here before they try to use the get an IPPIN. So you want to review the requirements so you have all this information in front of you to verify who it is you are to the IRS to their satisfaction so that you can move forward with the process. So the, for security reasons, the tax pros can't get an IPPIN on the uh, behalf of the taxpayer. So as a taxpayer, in other words, you might be saying, hey, why don't I get my CPA or my tax professional to just get this IPP at my end for me, acting as my agent, and so on to do that. But the IRS is saying no, because this is a this is an identification verification thing, and they want you to do it directly. 
So tax pros who experience data theft can help clients by urging them to get an IPPIN quickly. So if you're a tax professional and you're concerned about data theft or if you had data theft problems with clients in the past, then this is something that you might uh, you might encourage clients to, to do. Even if a thief already filed a fraudulent return, an IPPIN would still offer protections for later years and prevent taxpayers from being repeat victims of tax-related identity theft. So obviously, once the social security number is compromised, given the fact that it doesn't change for your entire life, then it's possible that they do the same thing next year and the IRS has no way of stopping them, even though they know someone stole your identity last year, other than now we have the IPPIN. So uh, more things taxpayers should know about the IPPIN. It's a six-digit number known only to the taxpayer and the IRS. The opt-in program is voluntary. The IPPIN should be entered into the electronic tax return when prompted by the software protect or into a paper return next to the signature line. So obviously, once you have it, you have to put that on the tax return to give you that double verification that it is indeed you. The IPPIN is valid for one calendar year. So it's only valid for one year. For security reasons, enrolled participants get a new IPPIN each year. So that seems kind of inconvenient for memorization purposes, like I say. It might be hard to memorize it for a year, but way more secure, don't you think? Way more secure if like, we change the number more often. Harder for people to steal it. And even if they did, they'd only have it for a year. That would be nice. But in any case, spouses and dependents are eligible for an IPPIN if they can verify their identities. The IPPIN uses uh, should never share their number with anyone but the IRS and their trusted tax preparation provider. The IRS will never call, email, or text a request for the IPPIN. Currently, taxpayers can get an IPPIN for 2021 which should be used when filing a, any federal tax returns during the year, including prior year returns. New IPPINs will be available starting in January 2022. Taxpayers who are unable to validate their identity online and have income of $72,000 or less can file Form 15227. It's in English and Spanish. Application for Identity Protection Personal Identification Number. There's a link to that here. The IRS will call the phone number the taxpayer provided on Form 15227 to validate the taxpayer's identity. So if you can't do it online, you can do this form that you can file and then the IRS will call you and they can try to verify your identity over the phone in that way. However, the secure, for security reasons, the IRS will assign an IPPIN for the next filing season and the taxpayer cannot use the IPPIN for the current filing season. Taxpayers who cannot validate their identity online or by phone or who are ineligible to file a Form 15227 can make an appointment at the Taxpayer's uh, Assistance Center. There's a link to the Taxpayer Assistance Center here. So if you can't do it any other way and you want to say, I need to talk to someone and show them my ID and that's how they'll know who I am then you can, you can look up a taxpayer assistance center and possibly get it done in person there. So they will need to bring one current government-issued uh, picture ID and another identification document to, prov to prove their identity. Once verified, the taxpayer will receive an IPPIN in the mail, usually within three weeks. More information can be found at the links below. Publication 5367, it's in English and Spanish. For the IPPIN opt-in program for taxpayers, publication 4557, safeguarding taxpayer data, publication 5293, data security resource guide for tax professionals, small business information security, the fundamentals identity theft center. There's links to that exciting and informative reading material here. There'll be a link to this in the description.